Oh, this is a tally vision that I'm repairing that somebody's left outside of the house in the garage just across the road from me. It's a 40 inch LCD television. It's a Samsung and it's got the usual problem that it's got bad caps in the power supply. There's the power supply board itself. Now this is a very common fault with these sets. I've already unscrewed the power supply and I'll show you what I mean. Right next to where that heat sink is there, those four caps that I've desoldered. There was two um, thousand microfarad at uh, 16 volt and there's two thousand microfarad at 10 volt. I'm going, to I'm going to be replacing both sets of those with 25 volt caps, uh, the high quality Panasonic ones because you've got to make sure you've got decent caps in these boards and these sets were riddled with the capacitor plague and if you look on the internet you'll see what I mean. It's an era around 2008-2009 where televisions were being made with terrible capacitors in that were pushed right next to the heat sink there and in turn drying them out and uh, the boards were failing. I've had this up and running already and if you do want to uh, check that it's those capacitors that have failed on yours if you've got a similar problem and the television won't power on just run a hairdryer over them for about five seconds just to warm them up and then power the television on and it should power up. Alrighty ho, I've got them replacements already, they've just turned up about 10 minutes ago. These are the, these are quite substantially much more bigger than the ones that were in there anyway. These are high quality, these are, as I say, these are Panasonic caps. So it's, it's in pristine condition. Absolutely immaculate condition. I think it's been left on the wall on a bracket and it hasn't even been touched. There's no dirt in it whatsoever. It's uh, completely clean throughout. I've done a modification to it by the way as well. I've fitted two speakers to the top there which connect to both the positive terminals of the left and right speakers at the bottom. So as this television has got SRS surround on it, when you press the SRS surround button, those two speakers at the top will kick in and they're forward fi uh, top firing. So any surround effects, a bit like Dol same principle as Dolby Atmos, the, the sound will come out the top of the set because the top of the back there I'll just zoom in and show you, it's got a great big vent right the way along, so it's going to be absolutely ideal for that. Okay. Right. Now, on the front of the set there is a plastic trim, a clear plastic trim that goes all the way along. Right, now, I've had the idea that um, it unclips, and basically there's enough room behind there to fit an LED strip. And this supply on the board for 12 volts which is there on pin number one. So in theory that could fit a remote control LED strip in there to give the television some ambient lighting at the front. Um, it is a lovely set this. Uh, I think that would look really nice if it did that and fitted that LED strip in straight the way across and drill a small little hole at the front there, fit the remote control sensor in um, for the sensor for the remote then I could make this um, change with the remote control different colours. I think that'll look really neat. But that's a project for another day at the moment, you just won't get him up and running really. But yeah I think that's going to sound great, I've added two um, these speakers at the front are 10 watts each at 8 ohms and then at the top there are four watt, uh, 5 watts each at 4 ohms so they're exactly half of what these are so they'll give a nice balanced surround sound effect. Okay which will be upward firing as I say and it should uh, fill the room with some nice surround sound effects. Okay, right, now, as I say, the television inside is immaculate. There's not a mark on it anywhere. It's been really well looked after, but it's just one of those sets that uh, has fell victim of the capacitor plague that, as I say, has been plaguing all these televisions for, for the, you know, from the 2008-2009 period and 2007 as well. I think this is a late 2008 model this one and uh, it's, it's a brilliant uh, picture because I've had it up and running uh, as I say around the air dryer, uh, air dryer over them caps just to make sure I mean don't leave it running for long periods of time because the amount of ripple that those caps are going to give off if they are damaged if you leave it running too long it could actually damage the rest of the set so uh, 
just do it just for testing purposes make sure the set power is on if you've got similar problems as the one I've got here but if uh, if this set does power on when you you applied heat to the capacitors then that is the problem uh, these two there these check borderline good now I've got two on uh, order from Germany which should be in the next two or three days but for now I'll leave those two in um, they're an easy snap in replacement for those anyway they're 450 volts 100 microfarad there's two there two big filter caps they're going to be replaced but for the time being they will get the set up and running but they are you know they are marginal so they are going to have to be changed but all four of those there were completely bolted out and absolutely destroyed I mean they were leaking out at the top I can't show you the picture of them because I've thrown them away but trust me they were and you, like, like I say part of the fault with these boards is there's so much heat that comes off this heat sink even when it's only been on for say five or ten minutes that the heat has pushed straight onto these capacitors so when I do solder them in I'm going to lean them over to the right a bit so you know it does help just keep the heat away from them and on the back of the case just over where the, uh, the this problem arises with these boards I've drilled a set of holes there let's turn the camera around to show you I've drilled that, that set of holes there to go straight over the top of the problem area so there's a bit of ventilation getting to it to uh, stop that happening again it is um, it's a design fault there should be vents there at the back all said and done I mean some of these sets have got fans in and if that what I've done there doesn't 100% cure the problem I will be fitting a little 40 mil fan in there because these do, do produce quite a lot of heat these um, power supplies so anyway I'll get them soldered in and I'll get right to it now I'll see them in as you can see there I've put some heat shrink tubing on the terminals and I'm putting them in at an angle facing away from that heat sink a bit that should help with the uh, stopping the heat building up around them there's one Right, that's all the capacitors soldered in and I think we're pretty much good to go now. I've checked every other part on this board. Apart from them two, you know, being borderline and they, like I say, they will be changed within the next couple of days anyway. But you can see I've put them to the right slightly and I've angled them away from the heat sink. There's the solder joints underneath. Yeah, we're pretty much good to go. I shall give it a test and see how we get on. See if I can get some of this filmed. I'll try to do one handed to show you what I'm doing. <laughs> just to basically just matter screwing these screws back in now. There's six of them. There's one there. Bit of a tight fit. Two, three, four, oh, that one's a tight fit, five, and six, okay. Is connected the mains input power. Oh, just while I'm here, speaking of mains, it's always worth checking. There's two fuses in this one straight on the mains, there, and one for inside the board. Where's the other one? There, just behind there, there's one there as well. And this one's a 6.3 amp, so it's just uh, worth checking to make sure that these. Uh, both okay, just put them on your multimeter, just check them. Right now, let's connect the logic board. Okay, let's 
looking at the inverter. Right, I think that's I think that's pretty much it for the connections. Just double check before I power it up. I have brought the remote control to this uh, from Charles Hyde and son.co.uk or .com, one of the two, I'll, give, I'll put the link in the description. And they said that was the remote control for this set and about four other just different, different Samsung ones as well, so I'll be putting that to the test in a minute as well. So uh, I'll give it a power-up test and see how we go on. Yeah, we're all done, we're up and ready. Yes, uh, it's working perfect. That was the problem, them caps. That was the problem. We're all good. Well, there it is, it's done. All the capacitors replaced. Good as new, inside and out. Should be good for about 10 years now. Yeah, I'm sorry about this video being a bit all over the place. I've been a bit busy in my man cave doing bits and bobs, decorating and putting a bed together and what have you. So, sort of had to fit this in whenever I can. But anyway, I thought, well, while I'm here, I may as well take them caps out. The ones that are in there. Those two big filter caps in the middle there. These are the ones. But I took out and as you can see they're in pretty bad shape. I'm just going to zoom for you. They are quite badly burned and, and bulged. Let's get the other one. The other one's worse. You can see there. Quite discoloured and burnt. And significantly bulged. So uh, these were borderline so I thought sorry to might as well just, just change them. And I brought some replacements and they've turned up from Germany. These are the replacements. Now the thing is with these is they don't fit in directly because these are snapping capacitors. These are the only ones I could get hold of in this value. So I've had to make my own mounting solution there out of some very thick gauge wire that's been tinned and some heat shrink tubing on the top. I've done that with both of them so I can just fit them in place like that. Exactly the same value 100 microfarad 450 volts. So they should fit in there, no problem. As you can see there, they've gone in. I haven't soldered them in yet. I've just put them in place just to show you that, you know, they fit in perfect. With that minor modification there. And I've got enough um, space there at the back to, you know, enough lead space there to solder them directly on. Okay, so I'll get them soldered in now. And... Uh, should be all good to go then, it should last a, a long time. Right, they're soldered in place now. They've gone in sound, no problems at all. And now we get on to the, uh, the fun part, which is a television service menu when I've put it back together. So what I shall do with this video is I shall put a, um, a set of pictures with all the service menu settings in. If you're doing this to your television, it, you know, it might be a little bit different from panel to panel, but at least you've got a ballpark to start off with if your service menu is all messed up. So I'll put all the, um, all the still images at the end of the video with all the service menu settings on. So we can, that should help you out a bit, you know, because uh, it can be a bit of a daunting nightmare messing about in there if you don't know what you're doing. It's easy to mess things up. And uh, that board there, if you do mess all your service settings up and you can't get all the new ones, you'll need to replace that board. The logic board itself. You should be able to find one on eBay. But uh, the calibration is a pain in the backside on these televisions. You need a special test pattern to go in. If, you, you, if you're collaborating from the uh, SCART, need a special test pattern to go in so the television can read it but uh, there's something I'll mention about these is this as well this is the inverter wires now when you first take this television apart these two inverter wires will be grouped straight together like that now that's not a good idea 
it's best just to separate them because if them two are together and they're touching you'll dim the picture they're best um, the, the further apart they are the better okay with them right now let's get this board put back inside and we'll go from there if we don't hear any bangs and explosions then we're all good I shouldn't think so because they're exactly the same um, specifications apart from the size these uh, seem to be more heavy duty caps anyway I'll put a bit of silicon sealant underneath the bottom of them like there was from the manufacturer just to steady them uh, but you know, they're, they're pretty solid they're not moving around or nothing so alright I'll get this board back, put back in and then we're, we'll go from there with the service menu right I'll just give it the power up test now Get the remote. Yeah, it's working. And it's powering on a lot faster as well. This is a good thing. stable picture okay now I'm going to show you how to get into the service menu make sure your television's on standby and the red lights glowing then on the remote press info menu mute power wait a few seconds you'll hear the beep And there's a service menu. Right, before I go any further, I'll just tell you if you want to go into the advanced part, press down on your remote until you get to number four, then type in zero 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 and it'll take you to the advanced the advanced menu. Now to be careful what you're messing about with on this, but uh, if you do want to access it, it's there. That's all the option blocking. Anything you want on the television blocked, that's what you do. On that part, let's zoom out a bit so we can see. Press return to go back on anything you're doing. I'll just go out to the advanced menu for a second anyway. Oh, sorry, no, go back in and go to adjust. There are all the adjust settings. You just still, vid still uh, pause the video if you want any of these settings for your sound television. Let's go back. Why see delay? I'll return. Uh, go on to sound. These are all the sound settings. Okay. Picture enhancement. There's the sharpness settings. Return. I think you can copy those um, onto the other inputs because all the inputs have their own separate settings I think on these televisions so you should be pretty enough near enough perfect if you copy those settings into your SCART and your HDMI settings parameters let's go off there I'm going to white balance adjust now unless you've got So it says failure, that's where I try to cal calibrate the television without a proper test pattern. 
doesn't really make any difference it's just to set the um, picture up but if you've got all the um, all the numbers and all the um, parameters put in there you should be okay anyway so the DTV has got its own test pattern that it does itself when you click on collaborate calibrate there's nothing really to worry about that uh, white balance these are all the white balance settings I'm going to if I remember right, the last time I switched this television on, I was getting a bit, little bit too much green in the background. So if I can sort that out in the um, menu, that should be okay. It's probably because I've changed the capacitors and a bit of the colours changed a little bit. It's EPA. That's movie. These are all the settings here so far that I've put in. These are the stock settings with the television, I haven't changed these yet but uh, these are for the um, movie mode cool one, cool two, movie and normal modes on the television's menu wherever you set these at here they change those if you put everything at the same level, say 128 for every one of these um, you won't be able. There won't be any difference in the um, cool one and cool two modes on the television. They'll all be the same. So this determines what they do. Okay. Right. So I'll just exit out of there, and it's all done. And if you do want to calibrate all the rest of it, you press the source button on your remote. And it'll change from DTV at the top there to TV external 1 which is SCART external 2 SCART the AV input the S video component input PC input HDMI 1 input HDMI 2 HDMI 3 and back to DTV so this television has got quite a bit of connectivity on it you know this is quite an old set I and mean, it's 2008 mid 2008 set and it's got quite a bit of connectivity on it but there's one thing it won't work with me uh, Panasonic Blu-ray player for some reason and the television is in HDCP high definition copy protection um, certified so it should work but uh, it doesn't for some reason. I My mean, computer works on HDMI, but the Blu-ray doesn't. So I'll have to look into that further. I've tried all the settings on the player, so if anybody's got any tips and hints and tips about that and why that isn't working, just let me know, will you, in the, in the, uh, in the box below. Okay, then, thanks for watching. I hope this video's been useful to you. I mean, it's a cracking old television, and I'm glad I found it now. And uh, I'll just switch it off now, and I'll close this video and say thanks for watching.